mysterious circumstances. With no choices remaining, or evidence of what caused the fire. All the rumor has it, the fire hoses were all cut. Just me. Coming back to our left is our physical information center. The last building St. Augustine to Mena Coquina. Inside the free museum, take home with bathrooms, discount ticket booth, gift shop, and more. This is also spot number two. Remain seat the you hear the bell. Exit to the left if you're going down a ladder, holding on the rails after you hear the bell. Used for these Scotch Irish students of this region, the Florida Crackers, or Crackettos, as a food staple. They would take the hearts of these juvenile palms, full of muckle black pack spices, and call it swamp cabbage. Just me. If you've ever had hard palm in your salad, it's the same thing. I never had it as swamp cabbage, but I'm told it's quite tasty. Granted, I'll eat just about anything, so take my word to the grain of salt. And dash of pepper, and various other seasonings. They would call the Crackers due to the sound of their bull whips, were up to 18 feet long and could be heard to a mile away. Used to herd their cattle all over the state and as a form of long distance communication. Florida became a United States territory around 1821, just in time for the yellow fever epidemic to kill all but one third of St. Augustine's population. At the time, non Catholics were allowed to be buried within city walls, requiring a second burial ground to be made outside. This burial ground was coming up ahead to our right, the public burial ground, also called the Huguenot Cemetery. Under the care of the Presbyterian Church since 1832, interments has continued out into 1884. The second largest in the country, this gun tickets are available for the booths going up to our left. Just me. Remain seated until you hear the bell. Exit to the right, exit to the right, like going down a ladder, holding on the rails, after you hear the bell. Wait for the bell. Those who leave have a good day. <laughs> Co founder of Standard Oil and one of the three richest people in the world. Tied only with John Rockefeller and the British monarchy. Sitting in the rock bench to our right is Henry Fogler. St. Augustine was a walled city, but the only way in and out with the city gates ahead to my left. These gates close at dusk and open at dawn. If you miss the curfew, you suck the swamps. Originally made of all walls, in 1808, they were replaced with Coquina. In 1908, they were almost demolished, as the city considered them an eyesore. They were saved from the dominant the miracle revolution staged to protest, dressed in funerary garb, so your teen sacked the passers-by. Show you just how much power free food can have. <coughs> Coming up ahead to our right is the start of St. George Street, a collection of stores, restaurants, and museums, such as our National Greek Shrine, Wallace Crocker Schoolhouse, the Mr. Sanchez House, and more. We're being seen the need the bell. And the other one has going down a ladder, pulling off the rails, and you hear the bell. Exit to the right, then going down the ladder, holding on the rails, after you 
to the bell. Wait for the bell. Alright, nobody else on the roll. Who rules the road is on effects? At the port number 9 for town, the Queen Major of Spain gave the order for a story of what he built. This story is part number 6, the Fate Front. Remain seated until you hear the bell. Exit to the right and going down the ladder, holding on the rails after you hear the bell. And once again, there's a delivery truck park here, so it's that both wire has it to park in the road. Again. Wait for the bell. Those of you leaving, have a good day. One moment. As a defensive measure. Artillery went the bay, would have a hard time firing their cannons into the city, as they're going to get a clear shot. Well, if we would have a hard time forming break, marching inside. They also could see around the corners, so they will open an ambush. See, number scene, Spanish Control, Florida. Wooded South, covered with five and four coverings, thatched roofs, and central fire pits. When the British came along, they added a second story made of wood, wooded balconies, chimneys, fireplaces, <coughs> glass coverings for windows, and front doors open to the road. When the Spanish returned, they decided they might these features, so they kept them on. Coming up ahead to all right, this white building is the Columbia Restaurant, founded in 1905 around Tampa, and is still run by the original family. We are now approaching stop 7 of Alta Street. Remain seat the to the bell. Exit to the left if you're going down a ladder, holding all the rails after you hear the bell. No stores, restaurants, and museums. So just coming up to our left, parents and grandparents take note. The Medieval Torture Collection. I'm sure your kids and grandkids will be dying to talk. Oh, about the fun they had in there. Coming up straight ahead is the Medorkin Corner of the city. The Medorkin joint entrance servants brought to Florida from the Greek islands like Andrew Trumbull to work his indigo plantation. That plantation failed, however, so left the Medorkins to die. They marched themselves 60 miles over St. Augustine. But the then British governor allowed them to take up residence in an unoccupied area of the city. It is thanks to the Norgans we the title of all this continuously occupied European settlement. As they were here the British left, they were here the Spanish came back, and they're still here today. Excuse me. Coming up ahead to our right is Scott O'Hara's restaurant, built into an original Crocker house. The wooden is constructed from is resistant to mold, rot, and the state bird of Florida, the mosquito. Or find a plan to build hotels. However, one car like he wanted was occupied by the Olivet Church, and they were too keen on selling. So Father sat the congregation down and made him an offer they couldn't refuse. If you sell me your land, I'll build you a brand new church. That church is coming up ahead to our left, the Grace United Methodist Church. <clears throat> Completed in late 1887, dedicated in January the next year, it was built in less than a year, and it cost Father around $84,000 to build. The pond landing got in exchange was valued at around $4,000. Father will quickly develop a positive reputation in St. Augustine for his contributions to the infrastructure, particularly among the religious folk. Eventually, the Baptists decided they wanted a church too, so they asked Father. Father told them no, but made him a deal. If they could build themselves in less than two years and funded themselves, he would give them a plot and light to put it on. They are successful, and that church is coming up ahead to our right, the ancient city Baptist church. With its closing instructions, a rather an apartment for the priest. Coming up to our left, this white building. Was, this white house was built by father from the head of the East Coast Railroad Company to tie them to move down here and take the job. And ahead to our right is the Henry Father Presbyterian Royal Church. Built in honor of his daughter, Jenny Louise, and his granddaughter, Marjorie. Roger was born, she only lived a few hours, then Louise wanted to come down here from New York to mourn for her. But due to complications with the birth, then she died in transit. Father ordered a church built in their memory, and wanted it built in time to commemorate the anniversary of their deaths. Working around the clock, it was finished with about five days to spare. Father of the St. Paul's Cathedral, 
George and the of Italy, King Francis Perry, Henry Fogger, his first wife, Jane Louise, Baby Marjorie Cradle in her mother's arms. The church is currently closed to the public, but the garden is open for exploration. This is stop number eight. Remain seat the tea to the bell. Exit to the right and go down a ladder. Pulling off the rails, empty to the bell. Coming up ahead, soon to be two all right. As it was once one of Father's hotels out here, built chart 1888, the one to the own. Inspired by San San Marco, he wanted to do it better. Well, San Marco had them just in the central lobby, all the water electricity, and hot cold running water in every room. It actually had those amenities in front of the White House. Fuel of the DC coal fire generators housed the building coming up ahead to our right with a smokestack. Said generators were provided by the Edison Corporation and are currently on display in the Sony Museum. Electricity in those days such a novelty, many people were scared of it. So Father hired special employees called switchers who would go into rooms and turn the lights for people. The Ponce de Leon was only open during the winter season, lasting from December to early April. It came to an exclusive clientele, and took the stay for the full season, and paid in advance. The only exception to that rule being various U.S. presidents, the two who we can actually remember being Linda B. Johnson and Teddy Roosevelt. <coughs> the hotel eventually closed down, reopened as a two-year girls' academy, closed again, and then re-reopened as an accredited the Beaux Arts four-year co-ed college, the Father College. I didn't say put your hand down. Now put your hand down. Coming up to all right, this circular rotunda was once the fall over the hotel. It is now the dining hall for Father College. The ceilings are painted with the same man who will go on to paint the Library of Congress. The windows are original Tiffany glass, valued over $100 million. Excuse me. Sam will see multiple layers of bulletproof glass. Great way to spend your tuition money. Father wanted to make his house out of brick but didn't have enough, and we need to import the rest of out of state. He needed a material that was locally sourced, fireproof, weatherproof, and would stand the test of time. He would use the brick he already has to trim, but settle on a new bunch of time for the main material, poured concrete. Concrete was hand-mixed in the molds, allowed to cure, the molds elevated, and the process repeated to the desired height was reached. A signature for concrete being the lines you see on the wall, it was like an old school form of 3D printing, or baking a cake layer by layer. Fog is not a bit more concrete though, he got off from architect Franklin Smith, who he originally wanted to design the tallest for him. Smith was too busy though, instead offering to teach Father's construction workers how to make more concrete themselves. Coming up to our right is the entrance of Father College, and once again in front, Henry Fogler. Inside the college you will see two towers, that is where the hot and cold running water was stored, while the parts of the other hotel. Franklin Smith would use tall concrete to build his winter hall coming up to uh, up which are entering now. A 110 scale front of 1883. Scale replica of one of the wings of the Arabo Palace in Spain. It is now the Via Zoe Museum, with audio tours available in English, Spanish, and French. One of the exhibits being a rug full of an Egyptian pyramid, dated to be over 2,500 years old. Hopefully, don't have allergies, because that rug is also made of cat hair. This is stop number 9, the Via Zoraya. Next door is a wisdom meditation garden for those who have lost their babies in childbirth. As such, we're not allowed to ring the bell here. Instead, we for audio indication to safe to depart. Exit to the right, like going down a ladder, pulling off the rails, after my audio indication. Ding, ding. Once the festive fortification for the city. During times of peace, they be stock on the bay floor. During times of war, they be tightened. Spice change will be tightened. The spice of them tearing up the hulls of enemy ships. Coming up ahead to our right is the Lightyear Museum, formed with the cynical pearl of the Ponce de Leon, built around the same time, the Alcazar. While the Ponce de Leon catered to the Horny Horny Rich Folk, the Alcazar catered more to the middle class, until it was purchased by Otto Leitner, car writer of Hobby's Magazine, who believed everyone should have a hobby, no matter how small. During the Great Depression, he didn't lose any money because he didn't invest in the stock market. Instead, he went about buying the collections of those that did, housed in his own museum, which opened around 1948. After his death, the building needed much your world to the city, on the condition it remained open as a museum. Inside is a wide variety of Victorian memorabilia, 
you can use another bit of two, music boxes, ranging from matchbook size to grand piano size, they would trade twice daily, a collection of crystal doorknobs, an Egyptian mummy, and Otto Leitner himself buried in the central courtyard. Now, you see, it is not the central courtyard where Otto Leitner is buried. It is, however, where the Olivet Church once stood. He fell upon the one left of them, and gave the Grace United Methodist Church in this place. No worse than the Fountain of Youth, so don't drink from it. <laughs> Just me. This is how stop number 10, the Lightyear Museum. Remain steep until you hear the bell. Exit to the left if you're going down a ladder, holding on the rails after you hear the bell. Up, oh, ladies and gentlemen, we're expecting technical difficulties. Please stand by.